So, hello guys, my name is Max and welcome to this video today. We're going to continue develop our Astro game using JavaScript and HTML. So, where we left off last time, that we just got a bunch of asteroids drawn through the canvas and moving around. So, let's continue from here. Um, I'm going to start by going to the asteroid class here and make some small changes to it. So, I think the rotation is a bit subtle, so I'll increase that one. And I think the speed is a bit uh, too fast there, so let's uh, decrease it. Yeah, let's actually remove that times four uh, completely. Yeah, so now I think these look a bit more like they're moving in space and time, <laughs> and uh, yeah, stuff like that. So I think this looks a bit better. Yeah, and we'll also use this scale value here later on in our code. So we'll save that to a size sphere, to a size field here in the asteroid class. So we say, say this dot size equal to the scale factor there. And yeah, so that should be it. So we go to the gift state now, I guess, and let's create some new features here. Um, yeah, so we can start by creating a function here that I will call generate uh, level like that, and that will just take a number of asteroids it will generate. So that's basically the higher level, the more asteroids we will generate later. But for now, let's just set it to 3 during our testing here. And then basically you can just grab this code and drag it down here, since we use this as a skeleton for our new code. And just make sure here that we call the generate level function, like that. So instead of 10 here, we will use None, the value of how many asteroids we will generate uh, there, and set that to the how many asteroids we actually generate them. And then instead of this stuff here, for the max x and max y positions, we'll set that to uh, some two fields here that we haven't created yet, but I think we'll call them something like uh, canvas height and width there. Like that, so let's actually create them. So you can say this dot canvas width equals game dot canvas context width like that, and the same here for the height parameters. So set that to game dot canvas uh, context height like that. So for now, shouldn't get any um, changes, but yeah. Anyways, um, and I also think the it's actually a bit big here, so I will change that to 8 and I will actually save that value to uh, a variable here that I will call asteroid size as the droid size, like that. Set that 8 and instead of 8 here, we can set that to the asteroid size. Yeah, so that's good. Hmm, so <laughs> what do we do from here? Well, we can create our ship class. So I just create a new file called js ship js like so. And here let's just create our ship class that can extend the polygon and in the same way as the as the um, asteroid did. And actually it's a, quite similar to the asteroid so you can actually use uh, the content of the asteroid class as a skeleton here for our ship class as well. So just copy in everything from the asteroid inside of the ship. And the changes we want to make, so we won't give it a random velocity, since we will use the keyboard to control that. And the same for rotation, we won't have a rotation angle. So just remove those two lines. The size isn't very important, so we can remove that as well. And let's remove the rotate function there. Yeah, so that should be it for the ship for now at least. So let's make sure that we include it in the HTML file. So source .js, uh, ship .js, like that. And let's create a ship. So you can say this dot ship equals new ship. And for the graphics um, you can leave that you can set a ship variable here for now so you can set it to the points uh, ship like that and for the x and y position also the scale set that to 2 for now and then the x and y position I guess 
yeah, you can set that to the uh, width of the canvas, divided by 2, so we center it in both the y and the x values like that. And then, of course, we need to set the max x and max y values here, and that must be equal to the same fields here as the uh, as asteroids are. So canvas height like that. So let's just see. <laughs> well, let's just make sure that we call the update and the drone functions on the ship. So we say this a ship update here on the update function, and then we can say uh, this dot ship dot draw here to the con with the context like that. Well, we haven't created the ship graphics, so let's do that. So we can just go here. Uh, here it is. And yeah. So a uh, triangle have the centrum of mass or centrum of gravity in one third from the bottom of the base of the triangle. So if you have a triangle, let's say that it's a uh, twelve, uh, sorry nine nine um, squares high, then the centrum of mass should be uh, three uh, from the bottom here. So this should be a correct, correctly uh, drawn triangle like that. But um, this should be will be a bit strange in the rotation function that, uh, or sorry, in the in the coordinate system we have, since we have the rotation at zero at start, and and that is uh, what do you say here. So we want the, the, just to rotate this rectangle 90 degrees to the clockwise here. And let's make it a bit more fancy with some heat shields or something like that. But we'll still use the same dimensions here. So this should be the basic uh, ship I'm going to use at least. You can of course draw a complete arbitrary shape <laughs> for the ship and use that if you want that. Anyway, so let's copy that in there. Hopefully now when we reload page. Yeah, you can see that the ship is drawn in the middle of the canvas. And two here as the size weren't <laughs> actually that bad, so I'll keep that. Yeah. So let's make it possible for us to control the ship now, shall we? But for that, we'll need our input handler. So I'll call create a new file of input.js. And in here, we just create our input handler like that. Tap class.extend like so, and then the constructor. It will take a list of keys this time, and inside of here we also have a object that we call keys like that, and we have a down object and a pressed object. So pretty similar to the one we had in the which game was it? Yeah, the Space Invader game. Anyway, so we create a reference to the instance of the input handler, and then we add event event instance here to document, so we say document.add event listen, listener like so on the key down event um, put the event or like like so of course and we have the um, key up event as well but let's start with the key down so here Actually, we'll create this keys field first here. Uh, sorry for that. So, to create that, we'll just loop through all the keys in the key parameter here. So, we say for our key in keys, like that, and that's keys, of course, this object and not this one. Then we say var code equals to the keys uh, key, like that. So, later when we put in this parameter here that will be a JavaScript object, something like this, and then we can say left equals 37 and stuff like that, up equals 38, and so on and so forth. So, left here will be uh, the value that is stored in uh, this one, and code here we can get from the keys variable using this syntax there. Anyways, so then we'll basically just say this dot keys, uh, but on code equal to the key, like that, and then we say this dot uh, down uh, key equals false, 
the same here for the pressed um, object like that yes um, so yeah actually we can use the code here for pressed since we aren't oh sorry let's use the key <laughs> I'm a bit uh, yeah anyways let's use it like this and we basically say here in the key down event we say if uh, self dot keys uh, event dot key code so if the uh, current uh, key code exists then we just say this oh sorry self dot down uh, self dot keys event dot key code equals true like that and then in the uh, key up method you can basically just copy this and copy this line as well and change this to false false um, and this to pressed so when we release a key, we set the values uh, to false, and when we press down a key, we set the value through here, at least for the down object. Then we have two methods, uh, is down method, that's pretty simple, it will just return uh, this uh, down key, like that, but for is pressed, it's a bit more complicated, not that that much though, that's the exact same thing that we used in the Space Invader game. So we just say if this dot pressed, uh, sorry, key, press uh, false. So if you already have pressed the key, then we don't want to register it again. Else, if uh, this dot down, so if we haven't pressed the key, so if this is the first time we press the key, then we want to return. Uh, this dot pressed key equals true and else we just want to return false here that means that no key is pressed at all yeah so that's it for input handler so let's just include it there in the source file also in the HTML file so we can just say script as source js input js like that and let's go to the main file this time and just uh, create it here after we have created a canvas so you can say this dot input equals new input handler like so and as I said it took an object here with all the keys we want so we'll have left and set that to 37 and up Let's add that to 38, uh, sorry, right, 39. This is basically just the key codes. And then down 40, and and uh, let's play, set the space bar as well, so space bar. And that's equal to 32, like that. Anyway, let's just center all that. Whoops, whoops, Daisy. That wasn't my <laughs> intention to do that. Anyway, let's try again. Uh, this is a new plugin, yeah. Anyway, like that. So for now, we have that declared. So let's load page and see if we got any errors. No, nope, it seemed to work. So let's go back to the game state and see if it works. But before we do that, though, let's just make sure that we say self input here as a augment to the handle inputs function. Yeah. So let's just create that one. So we can say handle inputs function with the input uh, parameter like that then you can say if input dot uh, is down uh, let's just test with the uh, space bar for now let's just log out the test message to the console so you can say test like that let's just open up the console so you can see if it works and now pressing spacebar, yeah, now I can see that the test message is written out. And when I press any other keys, even the arrow keys, nothing is logged out. So that's working. 
let's see if the is pressed functions works as well. So select map. Yeah, and now it only is written out when I press down the key the first time. So it's working. Brilliant. Yeah, so <laughs> the rest from here is real simple. So we'll just copy this down a couple of times and uh, I changed it to this down instead and this just written for the right, uh, left and uh, up arrows instead and when we press on the right key this we want to do, we want to rotate the ship uh, clock clockwise so you say this is a chip that rotate let's say 0 0.2 0 0.02 or something like that let's just test with that for now at least and when we press on the left we want to rotate clockwise counterclockwise sorry so we just say negative 0 0.02 not now yeah you see that I can rotate the ship at least but that was uh, <laughs> Uh, really slow, so let's. Yeah, maybe too fast. Let's try with six. Yeah, I think six is good here. Yeah, so that's good. So let's just create the acceleration function of maps so we can actually move the ship. So for that, we will create a new method on the ship class. So you can just say this is a ship dot move or some, something like that or sorry add velocity let's let's call it add velocity let's create that method right now uh, so add vel function like so and here basically what we want if we want to say we want to check if the current velocity is below a particular value so for that we can use the Pythagoras theorem uh, so that's is just basically uh, the square root of um, yeah two values. So say a times a plus b times b. That's equal to c uh, like that. Actually, c times c we can use it like this instead. So we will use this value, and where this is the maximum velocity that we want, c and uh, a and B here is the velocities in the x and y directions. So we can just say this dot velocity dot x times this dot, sorry, this dot velocity dot x plus y plus times this dot velocity dot y, like that. And then we just say check if that is smaller than the maximum velocity. So let's say 20. Then we want to add to the velocity. So we say this dot velocity dot x plus equals. Mm, let's take a velocity here, so 0 point, yeah, 3 maybe, math of cosinus, and we haven't an angle yet, but anyway, let's fix that. And then the y velocity, let's add uh, the sinus of an angle we haven't created yet. So, yeah, so we need to angle in which direction the ship is facing. So let's just create it here. Uh, let's set it to zero at start. And just to see if it works before we change the angle. Let's just uh, yeah let's do it like that. And see now if I press in the power key, yeah the ship is moving. But isn't the, the uh, yeah, decelerating, so <laughs> let's fix that first as well. It's really simple, you say this dot velocity of x times equals 0 0.99 maybe. And the same for the y direction. So let's see now, yeah. So now when we go a bit faster here, and if I release the key, yeah, the ship is uh, slowly slowing down. And yeah, let's make that go a bit faster. Yeah, maybe even faster. Let's try four. Uh, let's try five. So please, guess I should have 
check this number beforehand. But anyways, yeah, I think that's good. Anyways, we don't want it to go to the right all the time. We want to be able to control the direction here. So for that, we can override the rotate method on the polygon class here a bit. So we say rotate like that. And that took a rotation angle. And I believe we call it theta or something like that. So we use that in this one as well. And then we we'll say this of super uh, with the angle. So we still rotate the ship. So let's see if it works. Yeah, we're still rotating at least. And then we just want to change the angle here. So we say this dot angle uh, models equals. Oh, sorry, you can set equals this dot angle plus theta models two times math dot pi. Like that. Uh, it's somewhat working, not really. <laughs> let's remove the let's remove the model thingy. Yeah. Anyway, now it works. So now I can control the space and we can ooh, move the ship. So that's cool. Um, yeah. But let's add some exhausting flames from the ship, shall we? Yeah. So that's really simple. Quite fun to do as well. So let's go back to the polygon drop and uh, program, and let's draw some exhaustion, uh, yeah, exhaustion flames. And I will use this particular shape, I think. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically just copy it, copy it, and yeah, let's close down that program for now. We won't need it. Uh, let's go back to the game class, and let's call it flames why not <laughs> like that and let's t put that as the second parameter to the ship class so we say points uh, flames like that and let's just call it <laughs> pf polygon flames now then we say this dot uh, flames equals new polygon with the PF as augments there. Then of course we want to scale it with the S value like that. And then just make sure that you draw it. So context dot draw polygon. This dot flames. This dot x. This dot y. And then we rotate as well. <laughs> like that we write this one. Anyway, here we're gonna say this dot flames dot rotate with the angle like that so for now you should see the ex exhaustion frames drawn from the ship and they are rotating with the ship as, as well so that's good cool but anyway we don't want to draw them all the time only when the down key is pressed so for that we will make a new field here that we call draw flames and we set that to false at start here that and then we can say if uh, this dot draw flames then we want to uh, do call that one so we draw them and in the game state we just want to make sure that we say this dot ship dot draw flames let's set that false here before we check if the down sorry the up key is pressed and if it is then we want to say this dot Actually, we can do that inside of the add velocity class here. Um, yeah. So let's do that. So we can say here we can say this dot draw flames equals true. Yeah. So now they're only drawn when I press a key. So that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, so let's do some shooting now, shall we? That's pretty simple, uh, actually. But for that, I think we will, yeah, anyway, we'll do one thing at a time here. Let's cr uh, start by creating a bullet class here. So we can create a new file called bullet.js and set them the JS folder as well. And just make sure that we include it. Include it here, so script source. JS bullet.js like 
like that. And this up here is create a bolt cause. And that should extend the uh, yeah the normal super class there. Anyway, and inside of here, the constructor that will take um, x and y position and an angle. Maybe we say this x equals x, this y equals y. Uh, should put with this. Now we say this dot velocity equals and the x velocity. Uh, let's set the speed of the bullets to 5. Method cosinus of that angle, of course. And the y velocity, 5 times method sinus of that angle. Like that. And the update method, it's the simplest in the world. It just say is the x plus equals is the velocity of x. The same for the y direction. For the y position, sorry. And then the draw. Um, method that take context as a parameter, of course, and let's draw it as a stroke. But for that, we'll need two coordinates. So let's just say the previous and the uh, x and y positions here before we change them in the update method. So we say this dot previous dot y equals this dot y like. So, and then we can say it's context of begin path, context of stroke, context of move to this dot previous x, this dot previous dot y, uh, prep y like so, and then we just draw a line, so line to this x and this dot y. So that's it for the bolt class. Real simple stuff. And let's create it here in the ship. Um, yeah, let's create a new method on the ship that we call shoot. And that will basically return a new bullet. Uh, actually, we will need to set some fields on the build first, we will set var b equals new bullet, like that. And here we will say, uh, boom, boom, boom. This dot x, this dot y, and this dot angle for the positions. But let's actually not use the center of the of the ship here. Let's use the front of it. But for that, I think we'll need to redraw the sprite. Let's ch check here. Yeah, it should start on 6.6. .6 for the, or we will. We want it to draw from the first point of the ship for the of the or the front of the ship. So, yeah, let's just go back to the polygon draw clause here, and let's redraw the ship one more time. I think it's sorry for that. Let's try again. I think we draw it something like this, yeah. Anyways, so we can see that now the first point is this six here. So we want the bullets to be drawn here from here, or be created from the front of the tip of the ship. Anyway, that should be the last thing, last time we change the ship sprite. Yeah, and of course in the ship class, we change the shoot method here to. Uh, we can say this dot points uh, zero plus this dot x like that, and the points here of course are member of the original polygon class. <laughs> if you remember, you can take a look here. This is basically this field here that the ship has as well, uh, since it's extending the polygon class. Anyway, so you say this dot points zero. Uh, plus this of x and the same here uh, with the y here. So that should be drawn from the tip of the ship now or be created from the tip of the ship. Now we can say b dot max x equals this dot max x and b dot max y equals this dot max y as well. And 
course, we haven't created those two fields yet, so let's just do that. So we say max x, no max y, set that no as well. And then here, when we do the updating, basically what we want to check is we want to check here, we will say if a zero is bigger than this x, or this x is bigger than this max x. Or zero is bigger than this y, or this y is bigger than this max y, like that. Then we also want to say this dot uh, shall remove equals true, like that. And let's just check that field false here at the start, like that. So yeah, now let's see if the if the bullets are working. So let's go back to the game state uh, in the generate level function. Let's just create our bullet object as a new list, like so. Sort of map, uh, like so. And then here in the handle inputs method, basically want to check if we would say if input dot is pressed. Uh, spacebar then we would say this dot bullets dot push this dot ship dot shoot like that so I should create a new uh, the new bullets for us then we just loop draw all bullets so we say bar four bar i equals zero len equals this dot bullets dot length i is less than len i plus plus this dot bullets at i dot update like that and actually let's make a reference here and call that b uh, so we say var b equals like that since we here we want to check if, if b dot shall remove then all we want to do is basically we want to say uh, this dot bullets dot splice at i and we'll remove one object then we just make sure that we uh, decrease the length and the i variable there anyway let's just copy this down in the render method as well and let's get rid of some stuff here let's call draw in the context like that and hopefully now we should be able to shoot yeah and that seems to be the case so you can see that the, that the bullets are created from the front of the ship so that's good that means that it at least work <laughs> works so that's good yeah uh, so let's just make one final thing before we end this video and uh, like when we hit an asteroid we want it to be split uh, we want it to split if it's uh, above a certain size so yeah so let's do that so for that if you remember I had this Google Drive document in the first video I can see if I can open it uh, like here I guess with the basic and the link to this is in the description guys if you want to look at it anyways and we have this contains point method that took some arguments and stuff and that could basically uh, say if we hover over a polygon whether or not uh, a particular point was inside the polygon. So we use that method for our, uh, our splitting here to check if a bullet is inside of an asteroid then we want to split it, uh, something like that. So you can just copy that code. I think you should be able to do that with the restrictions I have given you. So we just go back to the code here. Let's go to the polygon class. And as you can see, we have the empty uh, skeleton here for the function. So we just get rid of some of the parameters like that. Let's get rid of that one as well. Let's tab it in. Yeah, so that's looking fantastic so far. 
but we have the p object, so we just say well p equals this dot uh, points, of course, since that's what we want to check against. And let's make this a bit more easy to read here. Uh, so and this is co co completely optional. <laughs> Don't have to do this, but yeah. Anyway, I think that's look a bit more clear what uh, we actually are doing here, even though I'm not uh, <laughs> too um, confident in what this algorithm actually are doing, but it works, so that's fine, we'll use it. Anyway, so that's good. So we have that done at least. Um, yeah, so let's go to the asterisk class since and override this method a bit. So that will make a bit more useful for us, at least in this game. So we say as point. So we override it. And as arguments, we will take an x and y position. And it's really simple. It just return. Don't forget the return here. <laughs> That's quite important. Uh, the super function. And then we just say this.x, this.y for the offset and x and y, like so. So, ox and oy here, the offset, that will be equal to the position of the asteroid, and x and y position here are the arguments from the from the method call here. And that will of course be equal to our bullets later when we implement it. Yeah, so we can close down this for now. Hopefully, if we load the page, we won't get any errors. No, it seems to be working still at least. So we just go to the game state, and basically all we <laughs> need to do, this is a bit stupid way of doing it, but anyway, we could use some like quadratic trees and stuff like that, but we won't bother with that. We just loop through all the bullets and check if it hits the asteroid. Uh, so for that, let's just make a reference here to asteroid we're at, and let's just call a.update. Uh, instead, and then we just loop through all the asteroids. So you say 4 star j equals 0, len 2 equals these are bullets, uh, dot length, like that, j equals uh, it's less than length 2, j plus plus, like that. And I just realized that I have spelled this bullet all over the place, but let's change that to bullets instead. Okay, bad idea, let's check again, asteroids is not defined, line 66, uh, sorry, here of course we uh, still have the, this, yeah, okay, still working, let's change the bullets now, yeah, it seems to be working. I uh, see, so we don't override something stupid. Nope, we override that, 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 and that, and that. Okay. Anyway, so we just take out the current bullet to say list of bullets at j, of course, like that. Then we can just say if a has point uh, b dot x, b dot y, like that. Let's just splice the bullet now to so say list of bullets. Splice uh, J, not I, and then we uh, decrease the J and length two variables. So let's see now if we should hit the asteroid yet. You can see that the bullets are disappearing, uh, so that's working. Uh, we've got some errors here, so one moment, guys, and we'll see what that is. Yeah, so I basically found out the error, it shouldn't of course be i here, it should of course be 1, <laughs> nothing else. So for now it is working as it's supposed to do. Yeah. So left to do is basically just to split the asteroids and then let's call it a day. So the splitting, uh, let's do the obvious and stupid way again, like why not? <laughs> Here we can say, we will just say if 
uh, a dot size remember the size we put in the asteroid class here or the scale factor and you can just say if a dot size is bigger than the asteroid size divided by 4 so yeah see so if it had been so basically when we split them we will uh, divide the size by 2 so if it had been split two times then we, it will disappear basically that's the plan at least anyway then we'll say 4 bar k <laughs> equals 0 it isn't often you need to go all the way up to k but anyway that probably means this is a bad algorithm <laughs> anyway k is less than 2 k plus plus and we can just copy some code here from the generate level method <laughs> basically all this stuff just copy it in it's happened in a couple of times uh, well we haven't set the position anyway we'll do that <laughs> and then we'll say a dot size divided by 2 like that and for the position, a, x position we set it up to a dot x and the y position to a dot y like that then we basically want to uh, increase the length and the uh, and, uh, i here oh sorry the length we want to increase that else you can say else here we want to uh, yeah, subtract from the length then we just want to splice from the asteroid object so we say this dot asteroid dot splice at i this time and we want to splice one object and then we want to subtract from the i again so that's why we don't add 2 to the length there or something like that we will just actually we can do that that may be that maybe makes it a bit clearer what this thing actually does so let's just put out the length there get rid of the else statement yeah you can see it works at least so for now when we hit the uh, asteroid you can see that it should split yeah and if it's again it should split again and one more time and it should disappear so that's working <laughs> So that's cool. Uh, yeah. So that's almost it. Just one final thing. I don't think that's where we should start on 100, 100 each time. So let, let's make it a bit more random where they start, or at least on the uh, edge of the canvas. I think that's cool. So let's go back to the generate level uh, method. And before we create the asteroid, Let's just set our x and y field here. That will set to zero. Both them. Now we can say if not the random is bigger than 0 0.5, then we want to set the x position randomly. So we can say x equals math of random uh, times uh, this dot canvas width. Now we say else y equals math of random. Uh, times this dot canvas side of course and then we just basically set the x and y positions here like that but now yeah you can see that they start on the edge of the canvas so that's good so yeah let's just make one final stuff here to code Let's make the level progression system, and then we will probably make a, another, a third short video of this, or maybe not that short, where we add <laughs> menu states and stuff like that in a late and a, in a third video, and of course the, when we hit uh, the game over state and stuff like that. But anyway, let's do the level progression in this video as well. I think we can fit that in. Uh, let's see how long we are recording so yeah so for five minutes anyway let's do that it won't take long anyway so remember this num variable we set here in the generate level uh, function basically we want this to be uh, depending on the level we're at so 
let's just make a level field here. So you say this dot uh, level. We set that to zero at the start. Since we are programmers, we don't want to set setting stuff <laughs> at one at the start. We set things to zero since we are cool. Yeah. Anyway, and then we basically want a function that is uh, have this as a, the augment the level, and we want that to be uh, decide how many asteroids we want. So I have this program here that's built into I think all Macs that are made. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. Zoom in, yeah. I think this is something good here. So let's say we have the on the x-axis here we have the level, on the y-axis we have the number of asteroids we want. So we want something like we want to round it, of course. And let's test some different types of function. So let's create a um, let's test a uh, let's say x for now. Let's look something like this. So you can say. When the level is 1, we will get 1 asteroid. When the level is 2, we've got 2 asteroids, and so on and so forth. But it's a bit uh, boring here. But let's try x to the power of 2. We will get a much more interesting curve here. Uh, something like that, some sort of growth, exponential growth. Um, but yeah, I think that's stupid to have it like that uh, so let's have that steep <laughs> of progression so to ease it a bit we can uh, yeah, we can sort of divide the x value before we take the power of 2 there and yeah now we can see that we have this type sort of curve going but we want it to have not have zero at start, so we can add, let's say, three. So we'll have three asteroid at start, but that's a bit, maybe too many levels. <laughs> so twenty maybe was a bit too big here. Let's try fifteen. Yeah, that's probably good. But let's add five to the edge position as well. Yeah. So this is a bit good here. So you can see when we are on. Maybe this is two. Let's try it like that. No. 10, yeah. Anyway, so we'll have three asteroids when we're on level 0, 1, and 2. And then level 3, we will have four asteroids and so on. So on level 10, we'll have 5, 15, we will have 7, and it will grow uh, quadratic here. So on level 30, we'll have 15 asteroids and stuff like that. So we use this sort of curve for our uh, asteroids, I think. We can, of course, modify this to fit however you see good or what, how you, what you think is a good algorithm. Anyway, so let's create a function. So we have math around and then we had what do we have the level, this all level and then we add like 5 to it I think. Then we just divide up by, uh, sorry, what do we write with 10? And of course, this shouldn't be like that. Yeah, it should be like 2, I guess. And then we just add 3. So, let's see if it works. So, we're a page, we should see <laughs> 3 asteroids. Oh, sorry, we added 5 to the thing there, of course. So let's just add, just, uh, let's just add a 2 instead. Yeah, so we now have a level progression thing going. So if we increase the level to 30, we should have uh, like 15 of them, or something like that. So yeah, so that's working. So we have more asteroids as we are going higher in levels. So that's good. But let's head back to zero, and basically what we want to do is we want to, after we have done all the updating, all we want to check is we want to say if uh, this dot asteroids or length is equal to zero, then we want to call the generate level me method again and increase the level we are at. So level, 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 plus, plus, and then we want to generate level. 
and let's set the, the, exp the ship's position back again. So we say this.ship.x equals this.canvas uh, width divided by 2, and the same for the y position here, but with the height of the canvas, of course. And then we can actually get rid of this here since we are setting the <laughs> positions there. So we don't get that long line there, anyway. Yeah. So now let's just set it back to. Where are you? Yeah, let's add nothing here. So now when I hit, so there are no uh, asteroids left. Bear with me, guys. We should uh, get a new level going. And we should get some more asteroids drawn for us. So let's see if that works. Ooh. Ah, come on, one left. For God's sake. Ah, come on. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. No, so close, so close. Maybe this game is a bit stupid to play. Anyway, yeah, you can see that the level reset and stuff like that. So in the next video, we will do the score system and we will display which level we are at and stuff like that. So I hope I see you then. So that was everything for today guys, so thank you for watching and I hope I see you in the next video. Bye!